How much time are you and your team wasting when trying to figure out where exactly a particular OT component is located? I'm Ralph Langner and I'll show you in this video how you can solve this problem once and for all. In a modern factory of any reasonable size, you will find well over a thousand OT components. That is, if and when you actually find them. As an example, where is that PLC exactly located that you need to replace or that needs to be rebooted or receive a firmware update? In which building, in which room is cabinet XYZ-99 located? This problem is so common that we added a compelling solution to our OT-based asset management system. Interactive floor plans will allow you, your team and contractors to quickly and reliably locate that particular co component that needs servicing. Let's see how this works. In the OT base asset management system, we can launch a location profile simply by entering the name of the location in the quick search. And that can be a site name, building identifier, or cabinet ID or whatever. In our example, let's launch the location profile of our flat rock site. The location profile shows all networks at that location, all devices, a picture, and it also shows a location map that you can pan and zoom. Any sublocations are identified by hotspots. Pointing to a hotspot will pop up additional information and a picture of the sublocation if existing. In order to navigate to the sublocation, we only need to click on the hotspot. In the new location profile, we can also use the map feature in order to determine the location of rooms, cabinets and so forth. All this is pretty intuitive to use. Now let's look how you incorporate your floor maps into OT Base. In order to do this, we go to the location inventory and select the location that we are interested in. In the right detail pane of the location tree, you can see all the metadata for this location, which we can modify after clicking Edit. So as an example, we can change the placement of hotspots on the map and also include new hotspots. And as you can see, you can pan and zoom the map. Placing a new hotspot is very easy because all we need to do is right click, then select Place Hotspot. And now we are presented with a choice of predefined hotspots, which are simply the sublocations that OTBase knows about for this particular location, which you can see lined up here in the left side of the tree. So you can pick between any of these sublocations in order to place a new hotspot. Now, the lab so far hasn't been defined as a hotspot, so let's go ahead and select this as a new hotspot and put it on the map and once that we have figured out where the lab is let's just assume in this room all we need to do is drag it over there and now we have placed a new hotspot next thing is we save the changes and then we are done as you can see there is our new hotspot and let's check if the location profile was updated accordingly. In order to do that, we just do a double click on the entry to the left, open the map, and sure enough, there is our lab. 
The map feature can be used on all hierarchy levels, from pointing out the location of racks within cabinets to uh, cabinets within rooms or even geographical maps. So for example, if we launch the location profile for USA, then we can also use the map feature and then we can point out the various sites that we have inventoried. Finally, let's check out how we can incorporate a location map in the first place. In order to illustrate this, we'll start from scratch. So let's just go to a different location with no metadata in place. The only thing that we have already pre-arranged is that we have defined three sub-locations. And these are just three cabinets, A, B and C. Let's go over to the details pane, click on edit. And now the map window tells me that I need to upload an SVG, which stands for Scalable Vector Graphics. A bitmap such as PNG or JPEG wouldn't do because it cannot be zoomed without significant quality loss. So how do you get this SVG file? If you're lucky you already have it because the software that your company uses in order to produce floor plans is capable of outputting SVG as one of the supported file formats. If you're not so lucky, you have to stick with a bitmap such as uh, PNG, but I'll show you how you can turn this into SVG. In order to do that, we use a free software tool, which is called Inkscape. You could also use commercial software such as Photoshop. The beauty of Inkscape is that it is free and that it has all the features that we need. So let's step through this process. First, we open our bitmap as a file. Open. And we select this, just this first PNG here. And now the important thing in this import dialog is that you don't forget to check embed rather than link, which we have done already. And here is our bitmap. The next step is that we select the bitmap with a click. And you can see that it's selected by the funny arrow symbols down there and up there. And now we click on path and select trace bitmap. And this is where the magic happens. So first we check the live preview box and this allows us to see what happens when we do the various settings over here. In most cases what works really well with black and white scans or or pictures, photographs that you may have, is that you select Grace and also deselect Smooth and select Remove Background. And usually this results in a very crisp image that we can now turn into a vector graphic just by clicking OK, as simple as that. So now we can close this dialog and now you actually have two objects in this in this workspace. The upper object is our new vector graphics. So if I move this, you can see it's really two. And the lower is our bitmap, which we now select and delete. So now we are only left with our vector graphics, which we save to a file and we just call it floor map one or no we just call it detroit okay that's it let's go back to ot base and now we do the right click and select upload new floor map check detroit and there it is and then the next step would simply be pick one of the hotspots like cabinet a Put cabinet A where it belongs. Let's just say there. Then use cabinet B. And where do we put cabinet C? Let's just say down there. Cabinet C. There we go. Save the changes and we are done. Test it by launching the location profile. Double click. And there you have it. A practically useful OT asset inventory thrives on metadata. And physical location is one of the most basic and most important metadata items. 
The interactive floor plans in the OT-based asset management system allow you and your team to translate obscure room numbers, cabinet identifiers, etc. into actionable information. To find out more about OT-Base, check out our website langner.com slash OT-Base and also watch the other videos on our YouTube channel.